Um, it, I'm going to invite all of you to um, turn your video on. And I realize like not all of you have that capacity or want to share your video and that is totally fine. But I invite you to because we try to make this feel like a community discussion as opposed to like a webinar. And so we love seeing your faces and, and thank you for the privilege of kind of um, inviting us into your homes. So thank you so much. And I'm just scrolling through and seeing so many awesome people from all over the place. Um, Raise your hand if this is your first time attending our A Better Normal series. Wow, okay, um, cool. And raise your hand if you are returning. You've done a couple, one or more Better Normals. Okay, so this is like everyone's new. <laughs> so, okay. Um, so, okay, I want to welcome you to ACES Connection and um, invite you to explore our website um, after this, this Better Normal discussion is, is over. Gail, um, I'll let you um, talk a little bit about like our mission, but um, let me explain that um, we invite you all to join our website and you just go to acesconnection.com and click the join button. And then you can continue to talk about, obviously you're all here because you're into yoga, but maybe many of you are also interested in learning about trauma and um, what trauma informed means and the science of adverse childhood experiences. And so we would love to invite you to continue that discussion with us by joining us at acesconnection.com. And we're um, open for any and all of you to join. And, um, and so um, we are hosting these A Better Normal discussion series on Tuesdays, Thursdays, and Fridays. Most weeks, next week we're off. Um, and the whole purpose of these is to try to create a better, a new normal for the future moving forward in the wake of COVID-19 and the things that this is showing us about inequities in our society and um, all the different areas that we are hoping will become um, trauma-informed, which to us means utilizing the most recent um, neuroscientific, physiological, and psychological research for, so that we can all have the best possible health. And uh, we are so grateful that you're all kind of in on this with us. Um, so um, I'm, in a second, I'll turn this over to Gail and then the program will get started. I just want you all to know that at any moment, you can go ahead and drop your questions and comments into the chat. And then um, after, um, after kind of the initial um, discussion and activities and exercises, we may call on you to share your comment out loud, at which point I will invite you to unmute yourself and I will give you that ability to do that later. So if you're wanting to drop a comment or a question into the chat, but you do not want to share it via video, just go ahead and make a note of that in your comment. And without further ado, um, I would like to pass this off to Gail. Thank you. Thank you, Allison. Um, and Allison, you said you're just the tech. No, you're so much more than the tech. Allison really, um, from ACES Connection, this has been her, uh, her dream to do this and to help create this. And I just wanna give a shout out to Allison for all the great leadership she has done around these better normals. And as she said, we at ACES Connection are trying to think about how we can come out of this great pause, as I like to talk, talk, call it, um, and how can we create a better, uh, better world? Um, so I am, uh, I am with ACES Connection. I am a community facilitator. So I support communities mainly in California and in the Western United States to help them, um, different communities to help them create ACEs uh, awareness and create trauma-informed and resilient communities. And I, um, I don't know about you guys, but I have found, I, I, I also, I am a yoga practitioner. I have actually been practicing yoga for 27 years, um, uh, various forms of yoga, and I uh, have several yoga um, studios. I actually I live in Davis, California. Um, I have several yoga studios that I I have been, I frequent, and it all got taken away um, with the social isolation. Um, 
And uh, the idea of this better normal, and then I'll introduce, introduce Dion. Um, the idea of this better normal is that we are doing so much to serve our patients, our clients, our students, our families. And we hear so much about the need for all of us um, to take care of ourselves. Um, and we've heard, that it, we hear a lot about self-care. So all of this is in our heads, but realize a better normal that actually talks about self-care, but actually we're gonna do some of it. And we're gonna talk about ways in which we can be doing it and putting it into our structure, into our life. Um, what are some of the challenges with it? Um, so that's what the, the day today is. And so I'm gonna introduce Dion and let her introduce herself. Um, but then we're going to actually do some practice. You don't need a yoga mat. Um, she'll walk us through what we can do from our chairs or standing. Um, and then we'll come back and really do a discussion about the larger, um, how, do we, how do we do this? How do we practice this self-care? Uh, but Dion in particular, I've, I've, she too lives in Davis, California, and is involved in our resilient, we have a community here, Res Resilient YOLO, and um, I actually met Dion several years ago um, through yoga and yoga practice, uh, but she has, uh, she is a trauma-sensitive yoga teacher a yoga practitioner, and I really was interested in, especially at this time, what that means, what it looks like, and what, how, again, that better normal thing, what, what, what are things that we might be able to do as yoga practitioners, as yoga teachers um, in, this new, in this new world. So with that, I'm gonna introduce Dion, and then Dion, with that in mind, um, I'm hoping we can talk a little bit about what we mean by trauma-sensitive um, movement, and then let's do so. Okay. Yeah. Thank you so much for that, Gail and Allison. And oh, it's so great to see I'm on one screen with lots of faces. And uh, thank you for your smiles and for, I just feel in my body right now, I'm just going to name, name it, that my heart is racing. I'm really excited to be here. I feel like my voice is a little bit higher. Then, um, and I'm going to check in after we get to practice a little bit. I'm going to kind of check in and invite you to do the same. Like, has there been any shifts or changes for yourself? So, I do, I live in Davis, California, and um, I've been facilitating yoga, well, I've been even further back, I've been in movement uh, for both training for myself and teaching for over 30 years, um, previously a dancer, Pilates instructor, and at the same time, navigating my own healing from complex childhood trauma, and uh, realized that through some of my therapies, that talk therapy was getting me to a certain point. And I also had this movement life, but there was a time when I actually felt my spine for the first time. I was like 20 years old, my spine moving with my breath. And it was a, that was one big aha moment. Um, and I just became more and more curious as I was, you know, kind of in my journey for my own healing and also in my movement journey that these worlds really kind of blended a few years ago when I started looking into somatic experiencing and specifically my love for yoga, I was been, um, I was, uh, excuse me, uh, my yoga teacher training was about five years ago. And then I found the Center for Trauma and Embodiment out of Brookline, Massachusetts, David Emerson, Jen Turner. And um, it was the, it was the trauma center that Bessel van der Kolk was one of the founders of. And so two years ago, completed my 300-hour teacher training for trauma-sensitive yoga. So just real quick, I'm just going to kind of lay out the core elements, um, and then we'll get to kind of dive into it a little bit deeper, and hopefully, um, I'm, I'm much more of a conversational person than a lecture kind of person, so I'm really hoping that you're uh, willing to interact a little bit. So what is trauma-sensitive yoga? Um, there's going to be elements around invitational language. So it's going to be less of uh, directing you what to do with your body. It's going to be more of an invitation to perhaps explore and to decide, like what is, kind of have a little space to decide what uh, do I do I want to make this transition? Do I want to take this shape? 
So invitational language, choice making, once there is that, uh, uh, po the possibility to come into a shape or a transition, what is, is do, I, do I want to make that? What is the choice? Um, and if you're not sure, you can kind of explore. Um, I usually offer a lot of options um, and not options as in level, but options as in just simply that for choice making for yourself in that present moment for that day, for that moment. Um, so choice making, um, interoception, that is that neuroplasticic, that is that um, the, the neuroscience element of connecting your brain with your body. So there is that awareness of what am I feeling? What are the sensations? How do I feel about that? Again, circling back to the choice making and uh, shared authentic experience. So this level of um, safety perhaps, and you know, we're pretty much, I see some familiar faces here, but we're pretty much new new with each other, that we're having a shared experience with a little bit of a variation or a little bit of a barrier, but I think it's still, um, I've been surprised, like how much I do feel like I can be in a place of moving uh, with participants, even with having this uh, screen kind of technological barrier. So shared authentic experience and non-coercion is another aspect that I'm always keeping in mind, which means being aware of where's the power in the room, where's the power in this space, and I'm, I'm here facilitating with you, I'm not teaching you, I'm not um, the way I view it, like who am I walking into this space, and actually preferably to switch that power into the person who's participating with me versus me as a facilitator. So those are some aspects of the practice that might feel um, different than going into any other kind of movement space. And one thing I want to say before we drop into some movement is um, that it doesn't necessarily have to be yoga. It's called trauma sensitive yoga, but it could be a lot of times I'll, I'll more likely mention movement, trauma sensitive movement. Like I said, I, I'm a former dancer. I still like to dance. I love to weight train. I, there is, it is possible to do pull-ups or squats with a trauma-informed perspective. So this is just kind of an avenue to maybe introduce um, what does it mean to be trauma-informed in your, trauma-informed in your movement. So with that, um, how do you guys feel about dropping into your bodies a little bit and um, coming to some movement. Thanks for those nods. <laughs> All right, so you are welcome to either stay in your chair if you're in a chair or you could stand up. Uh, I felt that my mouth was dry, so I took effective action for myself and had a sip of water, just, just labeling it. So uh, yeah, you're welcome to either um, stand if you're someone who's been, if you're in a body who's been sitting a lot, like a lot of us are in front of a screen, that might be a choice you'd like to make for yourself. Or if you are sitting, perhaps there's um, some support, some surface underneath you that you might be able to kind of settle into. So invitation here to maybe rock a little bit side to side and kind of acknowledge what is that support underneath you. If you're in a chair and you'd like to support on your back, you're welcome to lean back into the chair and kind of feel that support. So there's that proprioception. Another way your body takes in information is internally, but also an interaction with the support around you, the temperature on your skin, um, your eyes. Um, you're welcome to look around and use your eyes to maybe notice and acknowledge in this present moment, what is your surrounding. All right, and then little by little, you're welcome to find what feels like neutral for you. So sometimes to find neutral, I'll kind of rock in and out of it. I'll kind of shift side to side. And either with your eyes open or eyes closed, perhaps find what feels something like neutral for you. And then from there, you know, you're welcome to Kind of notice your feet on the ground. Sometimes I like to open my eyes and actually see my feet roll from heel to toe. If you're standing, you're welcome to rock forward and back, heel to toe. Some things to notice could be your toes. So you're welcome to maybe spread your toes and land your toes back down. And then from there, what about uh, moving up perhaps from bottom to top, which is kind of 
a theory in the practice, working from the bottom up. You're welcome to notice your legs, maybe your floating ribs up over your hips. And then what about breath? So however you're choosing to be in this neutral place in your body, is it possible to connect with your breath? What does it feel like as the air that you draw in through your nose or your mouth comes into your body? Perhaps there's a sensation of expansion, perhaps through your abdomen, your chest, maybe around through your sides, even to your back. So no prescribed way to breathe. It's more of the awareness around the fact that you are breathing, Breathe, bringing your breath to awareness. Is there anything else you might notice? You could be curious, creating a little space to be curious about perhaps your heart rate, your temperature, You are welcome to remain in stillness, exploring the sensations of your breath. Or if you're someone who's interested in adding a little bit of movement, a little invitation here. In your own time, if you're interested in movement, so perhaps create a little space to decide if that's something that you'd like to invite right now. You're welcome to maybe bring your chin towards your chest and lengthen the back of your neck. And then perhaps the opposite, perhaps lift your chin or your eyes. There might be the sensation of lengthening through your throat, skin stretching. Now you're welcome if you'd like to maybe create a rhythm from this. So you could um, link the two movements. And you can breathe in support of the movement, perhaps linking an inhale on one shape and exhale on the other. Or perhaps you choose to breathe and move in a different way. Yeah. Is there something else your neck and shoulders would like to do? So perhaps explore, maybe a little side to side. And since we're having this present moment experience individually, you know, we're all gonna look a little different. And as you're moving, if you're choosing to move, are you still perhaps noticing that support underneath you and your breath moving in and out of your body? All right, little by little, if you'd like to come back to that neutral place once again, you're welcome to take that shape. And in a neutral place, I often like to take the time to notice, is there any residual feeling? Is there any warmth? Is there vibration? Is there constriction or openness? Just something that can, like, with, with a non judgment of what you're feeling, just perhaps with curiosity, noticing that you are, you may or may not be feeling something. All right, invitation if you want to move on, you're welcome to bring your fingertips by your side, whether you have a chair underneath you or you have just your legs by your side. You're welcome to use your fingertips as that connection to self, to your own legs or to the chair. And then what about leveling your seat, leveling your shoulders, and then you're welcome if you'd like to reach up with your arm. Yeah, so if this, if this feels like it serves your shoulders, you're welcome to reach up. You could even look up and see your fingertips and how much space can you take up? Or you can keep your eyes forward. And then from here, what does it feel like to breathe with this extension through your side? Maybe an expansion of each of your ribs, lengthening from each other, maybe your sides. Sometimes I just feel my skin stretching a little bit. And then at some point, you're welcome to expand with an inhale 
and then choose which side, perhaps lower one side and lean up and over. So we could kind of come into a lateral stretch. Now you can vacillate, you can kind of ebb and flow a bit in and out of this. Or if you're someone who likes to pause and extend and be in stillness, you can take that. If you don't know, maybe try a little bit of each. Another thing that might be interesting, you're welcome to bring your fingertips to your shoulder and perhaps create some circles. One direction or both. I just noticed that I was holding my breath. We're coming back into that, perhaps in rhythm. And eventually, you're welcome to come back to center or what felt like neutral for you and acknowledge how does left feel different from right? Is that something that you're able to identify? So there's kind of that curiosity, that space for curiosity to explore and then identify. What is that that you might be feeling? And this is all a way to keep us in that present moment from one moment to the next, right? How about the other side? So if you, if you, if you found that helpful to reach up and level with both arms, maybe take it to the other side. Lower one, one arm, one hand, reach up with the other. Just kind of ebb and flow in and out of this shape a bit. And then, yeah, you're welcome to take it side to side. Absolutely. If you're someone who likes the rhythmic movement, you might enjoy some rhythm in a circle or maybe a side to side lateral stretch. Or maybe you're someone who wants to connect with stillness. So if you're not sure, maybe explore. And then eventually you're welcome to come back to neutral. All right, another way that we could move our spines is perhaps in rotation. So if you're interested in exploring a little rotation of your spine, one way to do that could be to take one hand all the way across your other leg, one arm behind. Yeah, and if you're standing, you're welcome to stretch your arms out as well or, or make contact with yourself. Imagine this rotation of your spine from your tailbone all the way up between your ears. And what does it feel like to breathe in this rotation? Are there some spaces that feel more constricted or less available to you? Just be curious about it. At any point that you feel ready to take it to the other side, you're welcome to do so. So as you like, take it to the other side in that rotation. Another thing I find interesting is to be in a rotation and then articulate just through my neck. So I'll look from side to side, shoulder to shoulder. I find that interesting that you can be in a spine twist, but our spine can articulate so, so brilliantly. All right, if you're someone who likes rhythmic motion, perhaps side to side. You can swing your arms, you can lead with your eyes, or what does it feel like to maybe even do this with your eyes closed? Up to you. All right. You're welcome to continue with that movement if you've chosen, or you can come back to neutral and maybe with a couple of breaths, see if there's been any kind of shift. Has there been any shift in your feet, in your sides? And I thought if you're, if you're in a body who's been sitting a lot, that this next, um, this next movement might be helpful. Um, if you're standing, yes, this can still, you're still welcome. But if you're standing, um, maybe, maybe position yourself where you might have some uh, balance support, like maybe a wall or a chair. Um, invitation to take one knee and bring one knee up towards your chest. So you can do this in balance. If you're standing, you're approaching balance here. I'm having a seat, um, but I'm noticing that as I'm pulling, I'm activating um, my upper arm muscles, my biceps. I also feel active through my mid back and shoulders. What does it feel like to breathe in this shape as you're constricting or contracting, activating your muscles? And then from there, invitation, if you're seated, cross one ankle over your knee. If you're standing, you're welcome to come to kind of a balanced tree, kind of, um, you know, foot to lower leg or upper leg connection. Yeah, yeah. So you can um, 
bend the side that you lifted and perhaps come into that rotation with the, the leg that you had lifted. Now, if you're seated, ankle over your other upper leg. And then um, if you're standing, you're welcome to kind of create an unstable environment, maybe move through your arms. If you're seated and you'd like to maybe rock forward and back, I'm, I'm kind of coming into the outer edge. Yeah, so if you're standing in, in uh, something like tree, what does it feel like to maybe rock side to side? Or maybe reach on up, knowing that if you're in balance, that um, we're not intended to live in balance all day long, so it's not perfection. It's the process of returning, of falling out and returning that can be really helpful for um, being in the present moment and also for self-compassion. <laughs> all right, so if you're seated like I am and you have your leg crossed over, well, I'm sure I'm noticing uh, through my outer hip. So approaching sensation. So sometimes I'll dial up the sensation by kind of tilting into it and kind of exploring an area where I feel more sensation where I'll kind of back off as I choose to. Then at some point you're welcome to put that foot down and place your arms where you like. Sometimes people like to have their hands on their own um, midline heart or hands to prayer, uh, palms together. All right. And at some point, what about the other side? Yeah, you can bring in your other knee, hug it in, opportunity for activation. Um, kind of like this assertive, strengthening kind of um, energy, right? Sometimes that's what we're looking for. Other times we just want ease and flexibility and stretch and calm. <laughs> All right, so at some point, if you're seated, you can cross your ankle over. If you're standing, you can certainly hold your leg up and cradle it, absolutely, or you can come into foot to upper leg or lower leg connection if you know tree, if you have that practice in your experience. All right. What would you like to do? So you've kind of explored a little bit on the other side. So perhaps take a little space to explore, allow for curiosity, and then choose. Choose what you'd like to do on this side. And some of you are maybe in a totally different shape. Maybe you're, you've already tapped into the idea, like you know what your body needs right now, you know what you want, you can, you can make that decision, you can trust in the decision uh, that you make for your body. All right, little by little, as you choose, perhaps come back to that approach, of, pro, approach your neutral shape. All right, so one last thing here for the motion, for the movement if you'd like, um, it's called sun breath. And this is an opportunity to perhaps, uh, perhaps excuse me, um, actively link your breath with your movement. So that's the invitation. And one way to do that could be starting hands to heart, either overlap. Some people like that compression, almost like that self-embrace. Some folks feel more comfortable palm to palm. Another one could be um, hands on your own legs, on your own uh, body that way. I'm gonna keep my hands here just for the sake of being able to see and visualize here. You're welcome to meet yourself at the bottom of an exhale. And then as you're ready to inhale, perhaps expand so your arms, either lifting your hands or expanding them. And that would be the inhale. Match the inhale with the expansion. And so the, the tip top of your inhale would be the furthest part you choose to expand. And then the exhale, slowly match your exhale as you bring that contact, either hand to hand, hand to heart, or hands to your legs. Can we do a few more times? Just your tempo with your breath. the very bottom of your exhale, make contact. You can do this with your eyes open or closed. Connecting breath with movement, perhaps with awareness of your foundation underneath you. And then at some point, you're welcome to continue or at some point, hands 
perhaps overlapped at your heart somewhere or even on your own legs with your eyes open or closed, perhaps take a moment in stillness and silence to explore what, what is it that you're needing right now? What is it your body's needing? You could kind of address that idea of inner resource. And if you have a phrase or a concept you're welcome to breathe in that for another one or two times. And then little by little, you're welcome to open your eyes if your eyes were closed. Perhaps once again, look around your space that you've chosen to participate. And yeah. So I feel a shift in my voice. I kind of feel a little more dropped in, a little more grounded. Um, my heart was really racing at first because it was so new to see all these faces pop up and, and uh, very excited. And um, now I still have that same feeling, but I just, um, I feel a little more present. Yeah, I feel a little more, um, dropped in to my seat yeah yeah Dion I um I definitely was feeling when you mentioned when you put your hands on your heart when you first started talking I'm like oh yeah my heart's racing I mean I this is the first better normal that I've done and um and I I was feeling definitely feeling anxious uh, or a little anxious a little nervous and um just acknowledging that was awesome. And now I don't feel the same. I feel so much calmer. Um, cool. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. Yeah. So that's, um, that's a something that I've been so grateful for because I love sharing what I do. Um, but I'm much more comfortable in a one-on-one -on -one situation in a large group situation. Um, oof. Yeah, I get a little, and I'm excited that I'm activated and I want to feel a little more present with you. And when I'm nervous and I feel a little bit more like, oh, alert, alert, I'm um, just, I just don't feel as, you know, if I'm not connected with myself and have like this, um, my, you know, my autonomic system, my nervous system kind of like um, within that window of presence or a zone of resiliency as, um, uh, was it Elaine, Elaine mentioned in her, her webinar, um, we're, you're going to feel it. You're going to feel it. Even though we have this screen, you're going to be like, oh yeah, there's something about her that's a little off, maybe she's a little nervous. And, but I want to feel more connected. If I'm feeling more connected with myself, we have an opportunity to resonate with each other. Right. And, and a way to check in with that, like you can tell when you walk into a room, um, let's say you're at a mixer or something or in a classroom and you kind of scan. And what we're doing is we're looking for safety, right? Where's my safe people? Who do, who do I want to? And so we're kind of like checked into ourselves and kind of putting those feelers out there to everyone else and kind of see who who's going to kind of resonate with you. Yeah. I'm wondering, Dion, and, and I know you're doing what you're continuing to work after the last couple of months. Um, post-COVID, uh, I'm wondering if people, I feel like I'm just at a higher level of anxiety in general in my life. And I was realizing when you were doing, when I was doing the movement, like, wow, I was way up here. And yeah, yeah. I'm out here talking. Um, but I think I'm just at a higher level on a daily basis. with Right. Um, and I see some I, nods. Yeah, 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 we have this overall sense, I mean, whenever there, I mean, in general, we have, our choices have been kind of limited, so we've been limited, then there's a sense of oppression, so if you're, you know, it can, it's something that could feel very familiar to you, perhaps in your adverse experiences, and your traumatic experiences, perhaps oppression, and perhaps having your choices and your, your freedom, your, your 
movement, your ability to move in the world, um, limited. So there's that familiar feeling. And even if you're someone who doesn't identify with ever having that, that's going to be a new thing and that's going to be really weird. Um, so a little bit and a little bit and often that would be, that's my practice and my recommendation is so, so I will share an experience and I don't, <laughs> is the whole mask wearing thing. We talked about this before, but Ooh, you know what? I'm all for it because we love each other. We want to keep ourselves and other people safe and, um, you know, respect all of that. But boy, when I put a mask on, um, a whole physiological response is happening with me. So um, in my practice, I've, what, what, what are the choices that I can make within the confinement that has been kind of um, put upon me? <laughs> So what do I do? I limit it, like going to the grocery store, going out. So what am I going to do? And I, I kind of do in my car, kind of a grounding exercise. Still breathe, feel my feet, feel my back. All right, what shoulders? Go ahead and put it on. A new thing that I've learned is listen to music while I go grocery shopping. And I'll listen to some music that kind of helps me, like has a rhythm that kind of encourages me to breathe. And I just limit it. I just decide, okay, I can do 45 minutes. All right. And then I'm getting back in the car and that sucker comes off and I'm listening to music. I'm not listening to news. So I just kind of like the before and after to see, trying to bring awareness to it. So that's, that's one that's really been heightened for me, that, um, that experience. But um, just being present, listening, or if you're working with other folks and you're seeing what they're experiencing, what they're going through, um, even if you're, you're feeling like, so grateful I'm safe I have a job or whatever it is that you're grateful for um you're still feeling feeling that that oppression that anxiety and this is a skill this is a tool this is this practice can be a tool that is is something that we can invite into our own bodies something with the present moment that we can experience in our bodies throughout the day or for falling asleep, or let's say you wake up in the middle of the night. That's another one I've been hearing a lot. So waking up in the middle of the night, not being able to fall back asleep, I'll go into my, my body-based practice. And even though I'm just laying there, um, movement through breath or placing my own hands on myself, feeling what do my sheets feel like against my skin. Um, yeah, so that's, that does, I'm, for me, I have, I've done a lot of meditation and what, doesn't work for me personally, my personal experience is to like count my breath. So I'm counting my breath, I'm in my head, and I'm actually out of my body, I'm up here. And you know what, I'm gonna win. I'm gonna count to as high as I can, and I'm gonna do the best at it. <laughs> but, if, but if I'm, because I'm, you know, a striver, and I'm trying to do a good job. But if I'm in my body, and I, and I kind of go through my list of experiences, what are the sensations, the feelings, what's my energy level, I kind of go through that, um, I find that much more effective for regulating my nervous system to what I want it to do. So that's the other thing that I wanted to mention is that, yeah, you may have felt more calm. I felt more calm after this practice, but I might do that practice after I need to go have a tough conversation or something that is really um, more activated. I need to access assertiveness and determination. So I might do something that um, the same kind of practice, but my, the resource that I'm focusing on or asking for, asking myself for, is, might, be, might be more activation. That might be appropriate. Because there's there are times when we need to be level-headed, but active for our safety, right? So I was wondering, do you want me to go back through the elements of trauma-sensitive yoga and kind of Talk about those a little bit more. What would you like to talk about? So um, I'm turning, I'm going to ask Allison. We have, it's, believe it or not, Dion, but it's uh, almost 1245. So we oh only my gosh. have 15 minutes left. And there okay. are quite a few chats, uh, comments, and I'm sure, yeah, I'm not sure, Allison, do so, you, what do you think? Um, yeah, I think we, I mean, if we have to go a few minutes over, it's, it's okay, since this one incorporated like uh, an activity too. just, you know, I try to end these right on time. But you know, for this one, it's okay, if we go a few minutes over. Um, and so stay if you can, if you can, if you cannot stay the whole time, um, that's okay. So um, 
I'm going to, let's see, do we want to ask people how the yoga made them feel? Or there's a few comments like that. Yeah, I'm seeing some of that too. Very cool. Okay, so what I'm going to do oh, is sure. I'm going to make um, it possible for you all to allow yourself to unmute yourself. So just be mindful of that and keep yourself muted just to keep background noise low since there's a hundred of us. But if I call on you, then please do unmute yourself. So I'd love to hear from Mary Hawks. Hi, good afternoon, everybody. Um, Hi, I just chat that um, I felt a lot less anxious and I definitely resonated with the comment that I think anxiety levels are much higher. And I think doing these kinds of things even more in the present situation, especially if we're working with others who are experiencing trauma is, is really important. And I, I, I appreciated it and it definitely lowered my uh, heart rate and lowered my anxiety level. Thank you. Wonderful, wonderful. Okay, Dora Sasso. Yes, hello. Hi. I, uh... I really appreciated the option to stand and to feel like mm. the trunk of my body because I feel like with the sitting, it can be mm. like not everything is there all the time. Um, and so that was really helpful. And I just, I think that being able to incorporate some of the movement brought the, um, the circulation to head to toe so that it was all kind of working together. Right. Awesome. Thank you, Dora. Um, you know, I'm seeing some comments about, you know, requesting the element more, you know, more diving into one of the elements. And I was, you know, I was just going to say, like, I, I would want to invite people to, you know, check out my website and maybe look in there. Um, so there's definitely more. I would love to continue the conversation with anyone who would like to, more information after we finish here. So I just want to open up that. Um, okay, I'd like to um, invite Simona J. Simona J, are you here still? All right, let me know if you come back. Um, let's see, um, Sheila Twomey. Sheila. Hi. Hi, I'm Sheila. Hi, Sheila. <laughs> um, I guess I just, my experience was that I felt relaxed, yet also emotional. And um, I've been doing a lot of um, somatic work for the past five years, sort of EMDR, EMDR somatic experiencing um, because of complex trauma. And it's really hard to sit to get in your body, never mind stay in your body. So it was always like a, whoop, oh, you know, okay. And so this, this practice really helped. And maybe it's because I'm in the comfort of my own home too, but it felt really good to sort of feel like I was in my body for more than, you know, 30 seconds. Um, and of course, in doing that, it does bubble up you know, emotions. Um, so yeah, it yeah. worked. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So sometimes that, that quick, like, Ooh, you know, something's there that can be really, um, surprising at first. And, and then there can be the practice of like, Oh yeah, there it is. Yeah. It's like this recognition, like, I'm not going to try to squelch it. I'm not going to like, for me, it, it depends on the, depending on the feeling, I might get a rush of heat or I might have, um, a quick heart heart rate or all of a sudden I literally don't feel my body or it yeah and then then it's like oh yeah that's my body's telling me something okay what is this about and then creating a little space a little emotional distance to kind of decide how you want to respond to it and sometimes like um you know an emotional release if you're in a safe place where you feel like you can that might be completely appropriate it may not be appropriate to allow yourself to, you know, if you're in a board meeting or whatever, you might be having these feelings and you'll be like, oh yeah, there it is. You know, it might be like, okay, this might not be right now. This is the choice you can make perhaps and, you know, kind of reconnect with that at another time. So yeah, it's not about um, 
a certain feeling coming up and saying, okay, we'll take this shape and that's going to fix it. It's more of like this self-exploration of, oh yeah, that's that feeling I get when this thing, when I hear or smell or what, you know, whatever is the sense taking in the information that your body's responding to. Right. And not trying to shove it down, but be curious about it instead. So that's right. 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 So Dion, I'm looking at the comments and I do yep. think, um, why don't you go back through, I share everybody, I shared Dion's website. So you will see it down in the chat. Um, uh, and, but Dion, why don't you go through the elements again and having, and that is what we were planning to do is have her do the mm -hmm. practice, tell us the, 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 the elements, go through the practice and then, um, and then you go back to the, the elements with a little bit of linking to what we just right. practiced. Um, right, right. And to see if maybe that's something that you notice. Yeah. Yeah, and um, we will have the recording will be shared with everybody um, that that was that was on here. So you can actually hear Dion talk about the elements and then go back and do the practice again with this. Yeah, yeah, you're welcome to like repeat. That was, you know, it's, it's definitely something that even though it is repetitive, if you go back to it, you can learn something new or discover something new each time. And I know you have a, the YouTube tra channel too, like folks can go back to the recording on the YouTube channel. Okay. So um, yeah, five core elements, um, invitational language. So you may have noticed I was saying things like in your own time, as you like. Um, different from I still I still actually do teach like vinyasa yoga at a traditional hot yoga studio and I try to infuse all of this. Um, but but in the trauma sense of yoga practice is a little more um, um, perhaps a little more space, a little bit slowed down so that every transition um, and every shape is hopefully feels like an invitation, hopefully is received as something that is um, a personal choice for, for each person. And so it's not a direction, it's not, um, it's not the concept of, okay, if you've had this kind of trauma, if you've had this kind of background, do this shape, and it's going to make this certain thing happen. So not prescribing any outcome, not, not expecting a certain outcome from any particular um, uh, movement or shape that you're doing. It's more of just like this exploration and from day to day that might change from moment to moment that might change. Yeah. So you're practicing getting to choose what you would like to do your body. And that's a lot of folks is a real, interesting concept like well I don't know do I want to start with my left foot or my right foot I wow I normally don't even think about it and I just start with my right foot but maybe that might be interesting you know or like forget it I'm just going to go with my plan and what I normally do that's still a choice um yeah so oh choice making I wanted to share this quote that really um kind of sets the tone for um for my practice and my facilitating to other for other folks and that's by judith herman um she has a book trauma and recovery and the quote and i'm paraphrasing just slightly to make it gender neutral no intervention that takes power away from the survivor can possibly foster their recovery no matter how much it appears to be in their immediate best interest so that is if there's any intervention, as much as we want to help folks um, and do do our jobs well, because it makes us feel really good, if there's an intervention that really isn't a choice of the survivor, that isn't with their consent and and their um, well in their control in their power, um, that's really serving that's really serving them and allowing that uh, to happen. Um, and that kind of speaks to facilitators, teachers, uh, folks of who kind of feel like are in power positions and want to be helpful for others to be aware of that. So choice making. Um, when we're able to pause and reflect, reflect on our own feelings and sensations, we're allowing for a more mindful response and not just automatic reaction. So um, that kind of links into the interoception, um, the neuroplasticity of our brain and how there are neural pathways that have been indelibly 
um, imprinted because of past experiences and because of how we've responded to them. So this is perhaps an opportunity to create a little space and decide, is that how I want to respond? Or would I like to perhaps create a new pathway? I kind of think like freeways versus dirt roads. Do we want to make that, you know, that dirt road a little bit more imprinted? Is that really what would be serving us better um, than perhaps other coping skills or other reactions that we have um, taken on in the past? So that's the choice making part and then in, in, in the, uh, the neuroscience of it all is um, that can be being informed by what your body is feeling and then creating a little space to choose and then taking effective action for yourself based on that. So this is, can happen hundreds of times throughout the day. Having your mat or having your chair, having your time devoted to just practicing that is what is going to um, really be effective in, in making change and connecting in, um, increasing that window of presence or that uh, zone of resiliency. Shared authentic experience, I kind of talked about that already and about, um, you know, healing really takes place in community. A lot of times traumatic experiences, adverse life experiences happen in relation to other people, happen in, in um, I mean, of course there can be other, um, other traumatic experiences like natural disasters, um, accidents, collisions, things like that, um, surgeries. But um, oftentimes, healing can um, takes place in community, takes place in relation. So having this opportunity to practice in community um, can, even if we're not talking to each other, we're just moving and breathing, can be so impactful on our nervous system and on our own um, regulation and, and integration. And then uh, the non-coercion part. And um, this is something that I, you know, being, and I'd like to speak to, uh, this may or may not resonate with you, but I've been taking a lot, I've been able to take a lot of online classes from people throughout the country. And um, just for fun, some Pilates, some dance, some yoga. And one thing that I've been hearing a lot, and it's kind of jarring to me now because I have um, been practicing in a trauma-informed perspective for so long, is, um, is cues like, um, I want you to. Put your foot here, put your hand there for me. And I don't know if that's something you might, that might be something that you kind of like will, will uh, spark a little response now if you happen to hear it. But um, so that is something that I would really love to see shift in folks because, it's these, because these are folks, well-meaning, well-educated folks who are excellent at what they do and out of habit, perhaps, perhaps out of habit or just not being aware, um, are queuing in a way that feels coercive. So um, my, my hope is to share with um, you know, folks in all sorts of facilitating or leadership type of positions is that it is possible, in fact, it could even be helpful to perhaps cue in a way of, um, you know, perhaps if you're interested in, oh, okay, I thought I was hearing a question. Um, oh, the other thing with the yoga in, in a group class, um, there, I don't do any hands-on assist. There's no hands-on assist. There's no, I'm, not, I'm actually practicing with you. I'm not standing up and watching you do your thing. I'm here with you and I'm experiencing, I might even, and you may have caught on to this, um, I'm even speaking to what I'm noticing. Like sometimes I'm noticing my toes grip. Do I really need to do that? Maybe not. Oh, I just noticed I'm holding my breath. So you're welcome to notice your, you know, it's like permission. I, this is what I'm noticing in myself. So yeah, if you're, you know, permission to maybe notice that you're doing that too, because we're in this shared experience and we're not all that different. So it, in, in this way, we're more alike than not. So um, perhaps you're experiencing that too. We're kind of sharing this. Allowing for a little space for that to settle in. <laughs> Allison, I am very sorry, and Dion, um, 
there's housework happening in my um, my house is being renovated as we're speaking oh so it's really okay loud so i'm gonna need allison for you to kind of hit it home for me please i'm okay, sorry okay so okay yeah we're getting close to time so how would you like to um i think that we can just leave all of the the excellent questions and comments um right where they are which is in the chat and i just want to say thank you all so so much for all of your wonderful questions and comments this this whole um this whole talk dion do you have any closing words okay um <laughs> i think um that any movement can be trauma-informed movement um and that could be walking, noticing. Um, and I'm just, I'm really grateful to be in community with you all and that you even have an interest in this. Um, as a way, I hope it's a resource for, for you all for your own, um, you know, regulation, recovering, healing, wherever you are. And that perhaps, um, you know, some of the skills you might be able to share with other folks. Um, and that I'd love to continue the conversation. So, um, yeah, so I would, I really welcome that. Great. Thank you so much for teaching us all some good yoga that we can do at our desks, as well as the basics of trauma informed yoga. I know there's so much more here to dive into, but this was um, such a nice little taste. Um, and so, and yay, there's so much gratitude. I love yoga people. So you are much. awesome. I know. <laughs> <laughs> um, oh, I do. Yeah. May I say one more thing? Uh -huh. I was just thinking maybe I can put this in here. Um, TraumaSensitiveYoga.com for the, the Center for Trauma Embodiment. So that's kind of my um, my mentors are there. And that's yeah, TraumaSensitiveYoga.com. So if you want to dive into that, but I, but again, I'm happy. I mean, if, if I'd love to get emails and connect with you and just continue the conversations. I love to hear what pe what has worked for for you all what has worked for you for, for strategies and what you've found helpful, so. I think we definitely need to do another one since this one got to capacity and we had to actually turn a couple people away. Um, oh, so there's a definite need for some more movement right now where we're all cooped up at home. Um, I just wanna say thank you to everyone for joining us and we so invite you to please join acesconnection.com where we have so many great offerings, um, especially if you're interested in learning more about trauma and the science of adverse childhood experiences. Adverse childhood experiences have been linked with almost literally any health outcome you could think of from mental health issues to the physical ones like heart disease or diabetes or and things like addiction. So um, we have so many offerings. We have events, we post other people's events, we post the research, we post the opinions, the blogs, we post it all. So if this is something that you're interested in diving into and learning a little bit more about or a lot more about, we, it's all there. Um, if, it, if it has to do with ACEs science, it, is, it exists on our website. Um, so please uh, come on over and click the join button. We also invite you to join communities. You can do that by clicking the communities button and you can hunt around. There could be one in your, in your area. If you're not sure where to start, which I get it, it's overwhelming. We have so much on our site. Um, on the right hand side of our site, there's a widget that has your regional community facilitator and you can go ahead and find their email and, and send them an email. I'm the community facilitator for the Northeast and Mid-Atlantic region of the United States as well as Canada. Gail, Gail, what's your region? <laughs> I am um, the Western United States and the kind of West and uh, Northwest California. All right. So, but you can reach out to either of us and we'll get you connected with the right person. All right, everyone. Thank you so, so much. And we hope you have an awesome rest of your Tuesday. And thank you, Dion, so much for coming. So we great to be here. So yeah. For having you. So in great to community. see you all. Thank you. Thank you. So glad to be here. Very honored. All right, bye-bye. And thank you, Allison, for, for taking yes. <laughs>